Hello, it is Wednesday, December 29th, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times crossword, Daily Solve. It's a Wednesday puzzle, so midweek, mid-difficulty roughly. As you can, I don't know, perhaps tell from the backdrop, I'm back home. So these videos should start going out again earlier in the day as they as they traditionally have been, but uh, were not in the past week or so. And uh, that should be good. And today's video, before I forget, was brought to you by the support of Austi Pelisser, Laura Sexton, and, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster. So thank you so much to the three of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. And if you'd like to join their ranks, you can do so at patreon.com slash daily solve. And those at that benefactor rank, I'm back home with my mug, can get this, uh, this mug, this Daily Solve mug with the Let's Check the Crosses slogan emblazoned upon it. Um, although backers at any tier of the Patreon campaign uh, will all, of course, receive the months of bonus video solves that are already up on the feed, as well as the new ones that go up on a weekly basis. And now that I'm back home, I will get back to recording those. I'll record um, a few to uh, to make up for my the uh, absence of them during my travels. Anyway, let's... Um, oh, I suppose we have to discuss the clues from yesterday's puzzle. And it's no surprise that there were a few comments about that, given there were some answers about which I clearly knew basically nothing. Um, for one thing, Richard Lorenzen explains that ORU, the school, stands for Oral Roberts University, a Christian school in Tulsa. I didn't know. I was wondering maybe the R stands for religious, and it turns out I was sort of correct uh, in that it is a religious school, but uh, refers to someone's name. And Chasmart explains that Log Cab Cabin Syrup is indeed a brand name. So I was wondering what that was. I thought perhaps it's a brand name. Turns out that's what it was. And the South Fork, the Ewing's South Fork, that was probably the most baffling uh, entry in the puzzle for me. And Jeffrey Tennant explains that the South Fork Ranch was owned by the Ewing family on the TV show Dallas. So there we go. I've actually never seen Dallas. I'm aware of it, but it's slightly before my time, I suppose, so I've, I've never seen it. And um, I suppose that's most of it. There's some there's some additional um, people who commented in on those same clues, but I, I, I won't repeat them. So uh, apologies if I'm if I'm leaving yours out, but thank you to everybody for the information. And Kathleen Kathleen Quinn has an interesting observation. She says the revealer at 56 across, referring to spreads that use 20, 28 across, 48 across, and so on, apparently is more clever than seen at first glance. The term spread is performing double duty in that it can refer both to the meal being served, spread as in the spread of a buffet, which is the meaning that I took from the clue, but also can refer to the spread of a homestead, a log cabin, ca ca cottage, or ranch. Very clever cluing. That is indeed clever, and I, I did indeed miss it. I looked, I looked that up. I looked up spread, and that is apparently specifically North American uh, vocabulary for the plot of most commonly a ranch. So indeed, a nice little uh, double meaning there in that revealer clue. All right, I think that's everything from yesterday's Tuesday puzzle. Shall we move on to the Wednesday puzzle today? I think we shall. This is a crossword by Simon Marat and Victor Fleming. I think this is I looked it up. I believe this is Simon's second New York Times puzzle, whereas Victor Fleming, his collaborator in this case, has done several dozen. So uh, let's get going. Okay. Like court arguments. Oral, I would think. Oral arguments made in court. International group founded in Baghdad in 1960. I assume this to be OPEC, the um, Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. I think O is organization. A fog-induced frost. Does that rhyme? Let's check the crosses on that to be sure. Kind of bread could be pita bread, so that could work. Lettered awards show host. Lettered awards show host. 
MC, that's letters, I'm not sure exactly what that's getting at. Celebrity dog trainer Milan. Oh, strangely, I think I think I know this name, Cesar Milan. No idea what he has done other than, I guess, train dogs for celebrity. I don't know if he trains dogs for celebrities or if he is himself a celebrity who is a dog trainer, probably the latter, but possibly both. I don't know. NCR devices. I think NCR is a manufacturer manufacturer of ATMs, automated teller machines, cash points. Fail miserably unless you're a chicken. Oh, lay an egg. I see. Yes. The phrase to lay an egg, meaning to fall on your face, to score no points or what have you. Um, but I guess that's a success if you're a hen. A historically significant period would be an era. An era would be named for some reason. And kapow... I don't know, it could be BAM or any number of things, presumably. What travels on sound waves? And there's a question mark, so there's some kind of pun or wordplay going on here. What travels on sound waves? So which of, what word is operating as the pun? I'm not sure, actually. Here we have blank Ducey. I think that's AC Ducey. I don't exactly know what that refers to. I think it's some sort of card game term. I don't know if that just means you have an ace and a two. I don't know. It might mean something more specific than that. Part of the foot. And here we have Van Van Gogh, Van Gogh, however you want to pronounce it. I can't pronounce it in the proper, the proper manner. Anyway, uh, his art dealer brother. I don't remember. I think I'm aware of this person, but cannot, not so much so that I remember their name off the top of my head. Hearts Home. Oh, it could be the chest, I suppose. I don't know. Could be other things as well. 1980s fad item, is fad items, plural, advertised as the gift that grows. Could this be a Chia, Chia Pets? That was something that was big in the 1980s, and I think actually well into the 1990s as well. Some sort of plant that would grow out of a, a planter that was shaped like something. And so as the as the plant would grow out, it would look like fur or hair. Anyway, heart's home. So it does, does seem as though it could be chest. What, what about the crosses? Lohengrin's love. This would be from the opera, I suppose. I don't remember. Parking meter opening a slot, a coin slot. Clicks that chide. Could this be tisk tisk maybe? Is that what they mean by a click, a sort of vocal click? Saddlebacks, tumps, knolls, and the like. These are all hills. So there we go. And not a problem. It's okay. So chest is looking ever more likely here. What is this? Lone Grinslove O. Is it Elsa? And articles of exercise equipment. Yes, yoga mats. There we go. And so I suppose it is, I was resisting chest because it somehow seemed too straightforward. And this puzzle seems to have a bit of misdirection laced throughout it, but perhaps not in this case. Ice pack, hit man. <laughs> Sorry, hit men. There we go. Okay. Ice pack, hit men. So uh, that's clever. I've not seen this one before. So I think probably this means a pack of people sent to ice or the, the you know, slangly to murder, assassinate somebody else. So a pack of Ice men or hit men, I think is I think is what that is. And a, a bonobo is an ape, so that's looking even more likely. Singer known as the Prince of Motown. Oh, is it Marvin Gaye? And you ready? All set. And when we see these this quoted phrase like this, generally speaking, what we are going to do is replace it with another spoken phrase that would fit in the same scenario, in a sentence, or in context. Oh, oh, here we have another lettered adversary. So this must be our theme. We have lettered adversary in a battle of wits, and here we had lettered awards show host. So we do have Emmy. And Emmy, the Emmy Awards, that is an award show. So what is that? And then what was this one again? Lettered adversary in a battle of wits. Not really sure what this is all about. What is this thing? Oh, is it Theo? 
actually, Theo and Vincent Van Gogh. I think that rings a bell. I'm going to try it and see if my memory is <laughs> serving me well. Oh, M-E-M-C. So funnily enough, I was, I suppose, on the right track with M-C. I just sort of, I think it's because I happened to look at it when I had the E-M there. So I think what this is, lettered awards show host, you could spell this phrase, well, you could sort of phonetically create it simply by pronouncing individual letters. So the letters M-E-M-C, Memk. Uh, and so they must all they must all work like that. We'll get to that in a moment, but let's try and fill out this uh, this bit of the puzzle um, first. Kapow. So it does look like Bam, doesn't it? And the Lord of the Rings brute would be an orc. So here we have what travels, oh, I see, what travels on sound waves. So waves in a sound, in this case, sound meaning the body of water, a sound. And so that's the word with the sort of punny meaning as indicated by the question mark, the pun indicator. And here we have part of the foot is an arch. Okay, sure, your arch of your foot. That's perfectly ordinary. And everything else looks like it fits, including Theo. So that was, that was good. What is this? Buster. A narc, perhaps? A narcotics officer? Or, you know, the term now, narc, is just generally used to mean someone who's going to, uh, I don't know, sell you out or report you or what have you. Magnavox rival. So Magnavox is a uh, an electronics brand. I actually don't know if they're still around. But RCA is similar. I think RCA is still around. Magnavox probably is too. You don't see them as much these days, or at least I don't. You have my number. Could be call me. And a thick, liquidy clump. Not sure. Notices. Could be a spies. My first thought when I saw this was notices as a plural noun, as in a notice posted on a notice board. But it's just as possible that it is a verb, to notice something, to espy that thing or person, or in this case, notices and espies. So I suspect that's the case. All right, so what is this again? Lettered adversary in a battle of wits. Casey N. Well, this is probably Casey because Casey N. C. What is this? I'm just trying to think of names that would fit in here that could be pronounced phonetically with just letters. Let's let's keep getting some crosses. Lop-eared, as in a dog with the sort of folded over ear. Um, Barack Obama's A Promised Land, e.g., would be a memoir. And a thick, liquidy clump. Gloop? KG? I don't really, see, I'm sorry, I don't really see entirely what that is. Apologies. Um, I'm sure it'll be quite obvious when I get it. It's a little, little longer than a foot. I'm not sure. A bit of bar food. Boy, I'm really hitting a wall, aren't I? Pulitzer winner Harper, probably Harper Lee, author of To Kill a Mockingbird. Ewing, Ma oh, this is funny. Ewing matriarch on Dallas. I, they're... It absolutely must be the case that Will Shorts arranges these puzzles in such a way that these references tend to come back to back like this, because yesterday we had that slightly obscured, at least to me, someone not familiar with Dallas, reference to Dallas. And here we have a much more overt reference to Dallas in that the name of the program is quoted. Anyway, I don't know who... Sorry, my computer just... Uh, I lost my train of thought. Sorry, an error message popped up. I don't know that that actually showed up on the video, but I completely forgot what I was saying. Uh, pool competitions could be meets as in swim meets. And some RSVPs could be yeses. Oh, enemy. Lettered adversary in a battle of wits. Well, where's the battle of wits part? K... Okay. There'd be IQ is a battle of wits with letters. What is this? KC, KG. KNI, KME. What is it? 
Sorry, I'm, I apologize. Is RCA incorrect? I'm probably missing something very, very straightforward. Retail figure could be sales, retail sales. Ewing matriarch, maybe Ellie looks like it would fit. Confirmation or quinceanera. Uh, those are a right. So confirmation in this case, presumably presumably meaning into the church, such as the Catholic church, and then a, a quinceanera, the um, um, daughter's coming of age uh, party, I suppose, ceremony, right. All right. Ewing matriarch on Dallas. Maybe it is, it looks like it is Ellie. And then pickle could be a mess. You're in a right pickle. You're in a mess where elbows may collide. They may collide on armrests on an airplane. It certainly can happen. Rigging support a spar, I believe is a, a, um, support for rigging on a, on a sailing ship. First prez to have a 60 cross, and 60 cross is stereotyp- stereotypical lumberjack feature, a beard. Uh, was Abraham Lincoln the first bearded president? Interesting. I think Abraham Lincoln also came up in the crossword just the other day. Acronym of urgency, ASAP, ASAP. Urgent. Leave no leaves, say, could be to rake the leaves. And so when you see say, that means that this is an example This thing is the example of the other thing. It's not a strict definition. Raking doesn't mean to leave no leaves, literally. But when you rake, you could say, yeah, you're you're leaving no leaves, say, because you're raking the leaves away. So it's uh, it's less of a direct definition or synonym and an example of the thing in question. All right. One film shot could be a single take of film. Like pink or purple hair would be dyed. And let's check the cross on that. Hastened, yes, would be sped. And here we have died. And then we have a lettered school paper that's a snap to write. Easy essay, I would think. Easy essay. So I must be missing something about this enemy because all of the rest of them do pretty clearly allude to the um, properties of the clue. We have awards shows, an Emmy, and the school paper is an essay, snap to write, easy. So what am I missing? I mean, we have the enemy accounted for here and lettered adversary, but not the Battle of Wits part. And I am clearly losing the Battle of Wits uh, in this case because I can't identify what the Battle of Wits is. I'm very sorry if you, again, are ahead of me on this one, which is quite likely. But let's keep solving and see what happens. An agent briefly could be a rep or representative, one's agent, lettered home on the range when no one's home. Um, I don't know, but let's get some crosses for it. Um, have we looked at this? No, we haven't. The end. I don't know, dirge, a funeral song? That doesn't seem very likely. (laughs) Leading star in Disney's Enchanted. I don't think I've seen that. I'm not sure. Ides of March Reproach. Oh, et tu, right, because um, Caesar was... Uh, murdered on the Ides of March, and he said, et tu, Brute. Uh, You too, Brutus. Okay, and oat milk fits perfectly well in this little uh, region here. Garfield, for one, feels that this could be a number of things. I mean, speaking of presidents, it could be Garfield, the president of the United States. It could be Garfield, the cat. It could be Garfield. There's an actor named, what, Andrew Garfield, I think? It's not that, obviously, with that O. But anyway, I'm not exactly sure which Garfield it is. So let's keep looking around. Healing indicator could be a scab, indicates that a wound is healing over. If one prevails over someone else, one bests them. And the first stringers in a, you know, like a sports game or something could be the A team. If one is around for a date, ah, around for a date. So not, uh, not a date as in a rendezvous, but a date as in a calendar date, circa that date, around that date. And here we have low calorie in beer names, light, L-I-T-E, that commercial spelling of light. A field of expertise, oh, area. So this isn't bests, but beats. Fair enough, they both work perfectly well. And here we have a sure thing, a slam dunk, speaking of sports. Cabbage kin could be kale, another another, um, lettuce green. And... If something is well kept, it is neat. A dingy thingy. Dingy thingy. 
So there's some sort of pun there. We've, I mean, you wouldn't even need the, I don't know that you even need the question mark to indicate that's a pun. It's such a silly clue, but I'm sure it'll be obvious when we see it. Ingredient in traditional medicine, ah, also an ingredient in traditional New York Times crosswords, the word aloe. And the best is yet to come. Fenway squad in brief, Fenway. That's a stadium. So what is this? Dingy thingy. Oh, the Sox, the um, Red Sox, and this is dingy. Oh, a text, I see, because it dings on your phone. It really took me a while to get that one. Okay, I'm not surprised I didn't get it, though. That's a little bit uh, buried, but it's, but I think it works. I would think it works fine. Although it is a tough cross if you don't know, if you, if you didn't have the American cultural context and didn't know Fenway Squad would be Sox, this dingy thingy might be a little vague without that. Let me know how you fared with it. Okay, let's see. What else do we have in here? Oh, is this McAdams? Is that Rachel McAdams? Leading star. What would go in this first cell here? Huh. Would it be R? You don't usually see that, and it wouldn't work very well after the G. Oh, no. It must be Amy Adams. Sorry. Okay. Another... Adams ended named actor. Okay, so there we go. It must be Amy Adams. Um, that that makes more sense in this in this film. And then here we have lettered home on the range when no one's home. Lettered home on the range when no one's. Oh, it could be a TP. That would be a, a home that might be out on a range. So what is this? Thick liquidy clump. Oh, KG enemy. Oh. So it is KG. That was one of my earlier thoughts. I suppose by, I think by by lettered adversary in a battle of wits, I was looking for something more specific about, I don't know, something that implies a quiz game or a trivia contest or something like that. But in a, this means a battle of wits in the more general sense, not necessarily a uh, literal test of knowledge, but rather a general kind of conflict in which the two parties are trying to outfox one another. And they're very being very cagey. So that that does make sense. I think I just overread the specificity of the clue to my own to my own detriment. Okay, let's see. Is there anything we haven't seen yet? Muscled slangly, don't think we've seen that. Shout out from the stands and a stroke ahead in golf. Okay, so yeah, don't don't think we've seen any of these. So a stroke ahead in golf. Is this the sort of eagle and bogey and that sort of thing? Those actually both have a G right here. The end. That uh, doesn't look like anything. Um, bit of bar food. What is that? Oh, and be oh, here's another one we haven't seen. Bega who sang Mambo Number no. Five. Well, out of all of these, I guess this is the one that I'm getting first. Lou Bega sang Mambo Number no. Five. I think Lou Bega <laughs> learned this. I don't know, a couple months ago. I think. Lou Bega. I don't remember his his original given name, but I believe his surname is Lou Bega, and he turned that into a given name and a surname, Lou Lou Bega. I think that's where his name comes from. Anyway, muscled slangily. Muscled. So that is in muscled one's way into an area or something. Shout out from the stands. And a stroke ahead in golf. Oh, one up maybe? Lettered home on the range when no one's home. Oh, MTTP. There we go. MTTP. I guess you're not really pronouncing the P in that case. Empty, but... That can be alighted. Shout out from the stands. Oh, is it hi, mom? Okay. Not at all surprised I didn't get that one without more crosses. Oh, and here we have the end, omega, as in alpha and omega, the beginning and the end of the Greek alphabet. And a bit of bar food. Why do I not, why do I not see what this is? Sometimes I wonder. Okay, I'm just looking down at the keyboard to glance at the letters available to me. Oh, wing, I guess. Is it a chicken wing? Okay. 
and muscled, oh, I see, it's muscled as an adjective, not a verb. So there were a few cases in this little segment where I was just on the wrong track entirely. And here's another one. I was thinking of muscled as in muscled one's way into the room. It's not. It's muscled as in you are very muscled. Isn't really a, I don't think of that as being an adjective. It's in particularly common uses. I would think muscular would be how I would think of this. But anyway, it's probably valid. And anyway, I think the answer is swole, which I think is a is a slang corruption of the word swollen, probably, to indicate physically large. And there we go. And I think actually now that I'm now that I'm back home on my my uh more highly tested setup, uh I think you should have heard the uh, completion jingle. So a welcome return to the completion for the completion jingle. And there we have it. There was the Wednesday puzzle. So this was a this was a fun little theme that I think was pretty clear after a single answer, but still gave me a bit of a challenge, particularly with KG Enemy. That took me quite a while to eventually come back. And I think this was a very KG answer. It held its secrets and defeated me in the battle of wits for quite some time. So let's see, do we have, I guess we don't have a revealer. We just have the, um, I think we just have the clues themselves. Apologies if I'm forgetting already a revealer. But we had the Emmy MC, the Lettered Awards show host, uh, the KG Enemy, the Lettered Adversary in a Battle of Wits, the Empty TP, a Lettered Home on the Range when no one's home, and an Easy Essay, a Lettered School Paper that's a snap to write. And all of these lettered answers can be pronounced uh, simply by sounding out the names of, I guess, four letters in each case. No, not not true, because K-G-N-M-E is five, actually. Yeah, the rest are four. All right, and there we have it. That was The Wednesday Puzzle by Simon Marat and Victor Fleming. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, please do subscribe to the channel, and uh, you will see these videos more easily as they are posted each day back at their earlier traditional time. Well, not today. Today was still quite late, but starting tomorrow. Anyway, they should be back to, to the early posting schedule. And if you subscribe, you'll see those every day. You can also follow me on Twitter at The Daily Solve, and you can join the Daily Solve Discord chat server. Uh, there's a link in the description field underneath the video, and there you can chat with other members of this community about the series, New York Times crosswords, other crosswords, other puzzles, and crossword construction. And as I have mentioned a couple times over the last week or so, I'm going to be solving more of the um, community-created crosswords for the Patreon feed now that I'm back home. So I'll get, I'll get to that soon. And I think that's about it. So thank you so much for joining me on today's uh, Wednesday edition of The Daily Solve. I hope you'll be back tomorrow for the Thursday edition when presumably our my, uh, my theme determining and theme solving skills are going to have to take a step up from today because Thursday tends to be a bit more ambitious in the theme department. And so do come back for that. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Wednesday. Take care. Mm -hmm.